simple math once again affects the Chicago Bulls when you look at the number of three point shots, the Bulls' inability to make three pointers, and then on top of that, the turnover battle. We're going to talk about the Bulls' loss to the Clippers and everything that went into it. We're also going to talk about the Bulls keeping their ground, though, in the playing race and what that means for the end of the season. We're going to get into all that plus some more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central. Your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. All right, Bulls fans, welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. Right off the top, if you want to follow the show, you can do so at Bulls Central Pod. You can also follow me at CEO Hayes, that's CEO H A I Z E. And so the Bulls had a tough loss against the Los Angeles Clippers last night. That's just, it just is what it is, right? When you look at the Bulls, they didn't execute well enough on defense, even though at the, at, in the first half, I will give it, the Bulls were, were rotating out to the three-point shot. Well, the Clippers were just hitting those three-point shots regardless if they had a hand in their face or not. But in the second half, it was a much different game, right? It was not much different as far as result, but the Bulls didn't really have the same umph that they had in the first half defensively and it was evident. And, you know, they shot the ball bad throughout the game, um, especially from three-point range. Even though the Bulls finished this game 53% from the field, if you watch it, you know that this Bulls team missed shots in spots that they usually would have made them in. DeMar DeRozan especially, um, you know, he goes 8 from 16. Not a bad night from the field overall with 21 points, but there were times where DeMar got to his spot. The shot just didn't fall. Same with Nikola Vucevic, who was more aggressive. He was 9 to 13 from this. Again, not a terrible shooting night from him either. Zach Levine, he goes 8 of 14. Not terrible by percentage either, but he go he gets 23 points, but the Bulls just do not execute well enough in all facets of the game. 14 turnovers completely hurt the Bulls a lot. They got out-rebounded uh, by three rebounds, so that definitely hurt them as well. You can't be out-rebounded uh, in, that, in that manner against a team like, like the uh, Los Angeles Clippers. And just overall as well, if you're looking at the loss, really the Bulls, um, they just didn't get the 50-50 balls. There were times where, uh, Russell Westbrook and his energy alone going after rebounds, loose balls, tipping, uh, you know, you know, the 50-50 ball, things like that. It just did not go in the Bulls' favor. And the Bulls did seem like maybe a team that did not have the legs on the back half. But like I said, I can't even just throw them the bell on that because even in the first half of the game, they didn't quite execute the way that we needed them to execute. Uh, so, you know, either, either that Kobe had a, a cold night from the bench. I would assume it was 0 for 5 from the field as well. Andre Drummond gave us some solid minutes. He gave us 14 minutes. He was 4 or 6 from the field. But the biggest thing in this game, if you look at it, yes, the big three were all over uh, 20, point, 20 points in this game. Shout out to them for that. But outside of that, the three-point shooting, the Bulls' inability to hit three-point shots while the other team is shooting high-volume three-point shots at effective rate. The Bulls were 9 of 23 from the three-point range for 39%, which if you get to that 40% mark, it looks pretty good. But when you look at it, the 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 uh, Los Angeles Clippers made 20 of 40 three-pointers for 50%. But when you look at 20 three-pointers, that's just the simple math that's hard to overcome when you look at it. that That's that's 60 points from three-pointers alone. And especially when you look at Nicholas Batum only taking threes. He was 8 of 10 from the three-point line. He made almost as many threes as the Chicago Bulls did combined, right? The Bulls were 9 of 23. Batum was 8 of 10. Like, that that's that's hard to overlook. Even Kawhi Leonard, especially in that second half, getting hot from three-point range himself, he was three for five from three-point range. Then you also chip in Eric Gordon, who was five of nine from three-point range. That is just a combination that when you're not a volume three-point shooting team yourself, it's hard to overcome. And that's what the Bulls faced last night. That just is what it is in that case. Why is this boat wide? Both lights blue. Got to change that. Um, But... You know, so that's really what comes into it with the Bulls, uh, three-point shooting. And the Bulls have done a much better job here recently of taking a high number of three-pointers and hit them at a decent clip. The odds just weren't in the Bulls' favor today. And even in the halftime, one of the things that I hoped in the halftime hangout was that, you know, the law of averages was going to win out and the Clippers would cool down from three-point range. It ain't. It didn't happen. And so when you have that, you also uh, turn the ball over as much as the Chicago Bulls do. You get out-rebounded, right? You do have 26 assists on 44 made baskets. Shout out to them on that. But it, it, the Bulls just did not have enough, and they did not execute well enough. We can talk about some lineup and, 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 and issues with that that we have, like 
The Bulls also going heavy double team when it's clear that the Los Angeles Clippers were prepared for the double team. Every time we double teamed Kawhi or almost anybody else on the Los Angeles Clippers roster, they moved the ball correctly and got wide open three pointers or wide open shots. Other places are cutting to the lane. So, you know, the Bulls just didn't have did not have enough. And you could tell Russell Westbrook as well was trying to definitely own that matchup against Pat Beverly. Uh, early with his first shot doing the rock the baby motion and you know shout out it, it it is what it is the bulls did not come out on top in this one they did not have a, have enough to win it and unfortunately that's you know it is what it is the bulls are still 10 and 5 since the all-star break right now they still um are the 10th seed they they've held the held their ground in that playing race we're still only one game back of the 8th seed and we're three games above the wizards and three and a half games above the indiana pacers what does that all spell out over this last seven games of the Chicago Bulls, with the lead that they have right now, if the Bulls can get four wins in seven games, they're locked into a playing spot. That's just it. They are locked into a playing spot at that point in time if they can just win. That is the law of averages. That is the magic number. If the Bulls can get four wins. And also, four wins puts us at a 40-win season, right? And if the Bulls can get above that, they can get one more win, they can finish the season 500. At the end of the day, Yes, the Bulls lost a, a tough game, and they have an even tougher matchup coming up because the Los Angeles Lakers, especially with Pat Bev and him doing the too small sign on Lee Little, 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 Lee Little, Lee Little, Little, Little. That you guys know who I'm talking about, the hairline James himself. With that said, um, <laughs> having some fun there. With that said, the Lakers are going to come out very much like the uh, the Philadelphia 76ers did in our second game against them. They're going to be firing right off the top. They're going to try to be putting this team away. They're going to come out with some edge. LeBron is probably going to start in that game. I would not be surprised. And I wouldn't also be surprised if he sits. But expect the Lakers to come out with a little bit more of an edge and really trying to, you know, get the, get their win back against the Chicago Bulls that, you know, because of Pat Bev and some other things, maybe had, uh, you know, shown up the Bulls a little bit. I mean, the, uh, the Lakers a little bit in that last game. Let's hope that Tony Brothers isn't officiating that game. You know, that definitely could help in, in, in the Bulls' favor as well, so look out for that. But ultimately, when, when we're sitting right now, looking at the end of the season for the Bulls, the last seven games, right? That's it. We got seven games left on this season. This team can and maybe will. I, I don't, I don't, it's hard to get a, a, a filler on the Chicago Bulls rest of the schedule because we've been such an up and down team for the remaining part for this season overall how we've been on the season really when you look at it it's just it really just comes down to are the bulls going to come in and execute when we when we play solid defensively that is where we find our that's where we have our magic at that's where our mojo is right the defensive side of the ball is where the bulls have to make their 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 selves felt and known in these matchups we have a tough for the rest of this week we got the Lakers, the Hornets, and the Memphis Grizzlies are the rest of this, right? And then when you go into the last week of the season, uh, we have uh, Atlanta, Milwaukee, Dallas, and Detroit. Now, Dallas, I, you, we don't know which version of Dallas is going to show up, especially if we can play defensively. We can definitely win that game. But the Bulls have, and that game against Atlanta may even turn out to be more important game when you look at those final standings and trying to move up to potentially that eight seed. So, it's it, the Bulls have important games left on the season. Every game is almost a game seven for the Bulls. Every game has huge implications on what the back end and their and their postseason future could look like. And that's the, you know the, the Bulls have to be locked in. And I, well, I, I'm interested to see how this team is really going to come out in the next game against the Lakers. We're going to be at home. It's really kind of the Philly scenario all over again. This is the second time we're playing them, even though it's not back to back games. But it's the second time we're playing them. We're now on our home court. We beat them on their home court. They're going to come out and they're going to try to set the tone early. The Bulls have to come out with energy. You got a day in. You got a day off. You have to come out with energy against the Los Angeles Lakers in that next game because I tell you what, if you come out slipping, if you come out flat, there's a high probability the Lakers are not going to give you much grace in that area, and they're going to come out prepared. So you have to be prepared, and we have to see the Bulls locked in. Now, I also want to talk about before we go this interesting article from uh, Casey Johnson as far as the Portland Trailblazers pick and what could happen there. Now, there are a couple things said in this. One of the things that I did also cover, they talked about, you know, conveying and changing the protections on that pick, but also maybe incentivizing the Chicago Bulls to send their the Portland pick back for the Knicks pick outright so then the, the Portland Trailblazers can have their pick um, to, to do other things with and to try to build on the fly around uh, 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 Damian Lillard. So I don't know why I threw a blank on Dame's name there for a second, but a quote from uh, the, the Trailblazers uh, general manager, Joe Cronin, said this. 
uh, that he pretty much talked to the Chicago Bulls at every transaction window to lay a foundation of the potential uh, scenario to, to either uh, move the, remove the protections from the pick or trade the pick outright. They see said this, whether it's changing the protections to a certain year and deliver it, or we incentivize them somehow just to get the full pick back, it can be a player, it can, it can be all kinds of variations. And the reason why this is important, it could be important for the Bulls this season, if they do decide to do something this season, right? The Portland Trail Blazers, in that Josh Hart trade, got a first-round pick back from the, from the New York Knicks that has protections on it. But if the Knicks make the playoffs, the Portland Trail Blazers get the pick. So that is one of the most clear things that could happen. The Portland Trail Blazers could say, hey, Bulls, give us our own pick back, take off the, prote- the protections in future years. Yes, it's, that pick is not going to convey this season, but the Bulls can remove the protections for the further seasons. We're going to send you that new, our, our New York Knicks pick back. It's going to be a first round pick. It's going to be, you know, it's not going to be in the lottery because the Knicks did make the playoffs, but here you go. Now you have a first round pick where you did not have one in this draft outright. Another thing that the, that the Portland Trail Blazers could do is completely remove the protections from the pick. So they can say, hey, instead of you having this pick that's protected, because um, basically the protections on the pick that the Bulls will get from the Trail Blazers is simply if the Trail Blazers miss the playoffs, the Bulls get the pick. They, the Portland Trail Blazers could remove the, the protections and say, hey, 2024, regardless of what happens with our season, that's your pick. Which then the Bulls can say, all right, thank you, we'll take that. We'll remove the protections. That then allows the Portland Trail Blazers to trade their future picks because right now, because of the protection that the Bulls have on that pick, the Portland Trail Blazers cannot trade most of their first round picks. They just can't because of the protections and the um, Stephian rule. So th- th- they could be incentivized to remove the protections for those reasons or just give us the Knicks pick for the protections for their pick. The ultimate thing is, is that if the Portland Trail Blazers decide that they want to give one last chance or however many, because they may not be the last, this is the Portland Trail Blazers, they could pro- possibly just keep trying to build, rebuild on the fly around Dame Lillard with, and not move off of them. But if the Portland Trail Blazers truly do want to um, try to build something with um, Dame Lillard in his time left in this league and the time that he has left, they could, they could then remove that pick or give the Bulls the Knicks pick for their own first round pick outright. They'll then have a lottery pick in their own. If it's in this year's draft, the Portland Trail Blazers will have a lottery pick. They can either then use that lottery pick uh, to draft a player that they think is going to be ready to compete now or a future player, or they could trade it with another team, Jalen Brown, you know, things like that. I'm not saying that specifically, but they could then use that pick to then go out and get them a player that can ha- help Dame win right now. Now, I don't want to get into my thoughts. I don't think the Portland Trail Blazers are ever going to build a championship level team that Dame needs and deserves. That's my opinion. I love Dame Lillard. He's one of my favorite players in the NBA, one of the most exciting players to watch. I feel in the NBA as well. Um, but the, the, the chances of that happening, and that would really be a gift from the gods in a way. If the bull, if because of the, the, the stuff that the last Portland Trail Blazers GM did with that, the protections on that pick, if that incentivizes the trailblazers to give us either their first round pick outright next year because i doubt they'll do that in a year where it is a lottery pick in this year um or give us the new york knicks pick listen we'll take it right because the one thing that the bulls did give up in a, in, in signing demar Derozan and in signing alonzo ball in a year that they did not have true cap space is they gave up first round picks they gave up picks to make make it happen they facilitated it that way you can recoup some of those assets and then AK has already talked about him getting creative like he did that offseason. I think people forget the season that we brought in DeMar. We had no cap space, right? Not true cap space. And so AK has mentioned that in some of his pressures before and mentioned how he's gotten creative and how he could get creative again to really try to retool the Chicago Bulls team. So a, a pick, a first round pick, be it from the Knicks or anyone else, could be another tool to, to, to facilitate that happening on top of, you know, the career ending injury exception that we can do for Lonzo Ball and a lot of things around there. But hey, that's something to look out for. Do I think it's likely to happen? Here's what I'll say. If a deal presents itself for the Portland Trailblazers that, that ha- helps them change their team, because keep in mind, if they do keep their own lottery pick, they then trade that New York Knicks pick and then, you know, maybe free some things up to trade their future picks, they can walk away with really, you know, Getting, adding a young player in this year's draft in the lottery that they can say, hey, whenever, we're going to try to keep building around Dame, but in three, four years, doesn't work. Hopefully this player that we're drafting in the lottery is ready to step in and be, our, be the player that we build around. And then you can still trade your future picks at that point to try to build something around Dame now. So, you know, it's something to look out for. We'll end up seeing what happens. I know 
Portland fans aren't necessarily the, the happiest about that. But, you know, the Bulls haven't gotten very lucky this season. So if we do get lucky in that sense and we get a first round pick back just because we own so much protection on another team's pick, I'll take it. I ain't mad at it. But before we go as well, one of the things also is Alex Caruso sitting out. This Listen, when Alex Caruso is out, it definitely impacts the team. And I know there are some Bulls fans that don't understand why Bulls are so high on Alex Caruso. And I do think when you look at Caruso and what he brings for communication, perimeter defense, being a, 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 a deterrent out there for other players and getting in players' heads, it's important. It's it's really important to have Alex Caruso out there. And he's been so up and down. He plays one, misses one, plays one, misses one. But we need Alex Caruso to go for a playing scenario because – I think right now the Bulls more likely are going to make the play in. And, you know, shout out to them for turning that around. They have to win these games, right? I do think, and I've said it, the magic number is four. If the Bulls can win four more games out of this last seven, they're they're surely getting into the playoffs. Now, if other teams continue to lose and things like that, then of course we can still make it a play in if we, if we don't win four out of our last seven. But it's important that we try to do that. So, you know, we'll see. Overall, frustrating loss um from the team and that's why you, you play the games. We got more games coming up. Tomorrow we, f- we face the Los Angeles Lakers, and we'll see if this team comes out better prepared in that game. But that is it. That's my time for today. Make sure you follow us at Bull Central Pod. Uh, you can also send us any fee- feedback, questions, comments, concerns, bullcentralpod at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text message and or voicemail for our mailbag episodes, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related because of you guys. And like I liked in every episode on, go Bulls. Love you guys. See right if you can, y'all. Peace. This has been a presentation of The Break Break Media. Media. Media.